Good afternoon and welcome to this webinar on what's it like to be a student at American University of the Caribbean School of Medicine. My name is Sekou Smith and I am the Southeastern Associate Director of Admissions here for AUC and I will be your host for today's webinar. As the Associate Director of Admissions, I have the opportunity to work with students from the time that they inquire here to AUC to the time that they actually matriculate. And from the time that you inquire to AUC, that's when your experience actually begins as an AUC student, when we want to walk you through the, well, give you individualized and hand walk you through the entire program. Today, I'm gonna to introduce our program and I'm, and I'm gonna discuss all the wonderful things that we offer here at AUC. And I want you guys to listen in on that. I want, and, but most of all, I really want you to see how AUC will connect with, who, with what you're looking for in a Caribbean medical school, all right? So we're gonna be discussing those areas. And to the pleasure of, of, of us, um, we have five of our student orientation advisors that will be joining us to share their experience that they've had so far with attending AUC. And we'll also open up at the end of the uh, presentation for a Q&A. Um, so be sure to type in your questions and submit those questions because we definitely want to address those towards the ending of the presentation. So please submit your questions there. Now, to kick it off, why, why should you attend AUC and why should you select AUC? The first thing that really stands out about AUC is that here we offer a fully accredited MD program that is recognized by the US Department of Education as having a curriculum that is comparable to that of US-based medical schools. So our students here at AUC, we sit for the USMLE in which right now we have a 94% first time pass rate on the USMLE step one. And our graduates are able to obtain residency and licensure throughout the United States in all 50 states. And currently right now, we have over 7,500 alumni that are currently practicing here in the United States and some international countries. What's one of the biggest differentiators uh, for AUC as compared to other top Caribbean medical schools is that we're not an institution that's focused in on filling seats. We wanna make sure that our students are in an environment where they can receive more individualized attention inside the classroom as well as outside the classroom. We feel that's very important to have that support as you're going through this long journey of earning your MD degree. Something else that really stands out, our highly qualified faculty members. In, in the classrooms, you're gonna be learning from a mixture of MDs and PhDs that are youth focused, they are student focused. They have, they've had many of our professors or, or faculty members have practice, have clinical practice, have also taught at some US-based medical schools. But their reason for attending AUC, and they also have publications and so forth and research, but their main reason for coming to AUC was to get back to that original passion, and that's to truly teach students and really teach and, and really teach and helping develop and not just coming to AUC just for a a research opportunity. They really have a passion for truly teaching our students. Uh, how the program works is that you're gonna spend the first five semesters on our modern campus and facilities. And the campus in St. Martin, that's one of the things that we're really gonna drive in, drive home today, is that the facilities in St. Martin, we've, we've placed those in a, in, a, in, a, in a position to making sure that you're getting a quality medical education, as well as being able to experience real life medical scenarios from the anatomy labs to our simulation labs that we have on campus, even before you're able to actually start clinical rotations. And speaking on clinical rotations, once you're finished with the medical sciences and you're moving on to clinical rotation, we have 24 teaching sites here in the United States and the UK that are available for you to complete your clinical rotation, okay? So let's give a little bit more in-depth information about the overall program, okay? So here at AUC, we offer a 10 semester program. Your, five, your first five semesters will be completed on our campus 
which is located in St. Martin. So please hang around. We're going to definitely get into talking a little bit more about the island of St. Martin and what it's like to actually be on campus. So the first five semesters, year one and two, med one and med two, will be the time that you're going to be completing the medical sciences. Following the medical sciences, students will return to the United States to first of all sit for the USMLE step one, okay? And once you submit your passing scores from the USMLE step one, then you are prepared to go ahead and start your clinical rotations. And as stated, we have sites in the United States and the United Kingdom. Now, you won't be alone trying to plan your clinical rotations or schedule rotations. At every point of your program, one of the things that you're gonna see is that you are going to have a support system. You're gonna have folks like me on the admission side, you have faculty advisors doing the medical sciences, and then you also have a clinical advisor as you're getting ready to prepare for clinical rotations and throughout all of your clinical sciences years, okay? Following the clinical sciences, students will be sitting for the USML, USMLE step two, okay? And then from on to that point, you are on to graduation. Now at that point, you are an MD, but the true real work begins from that point because you're gonna be entering into the NRMP, which is the National Residency Matching Program. The same program that where US medical schools are applying for residency, you're gonna be in the same playing field uh, when you're applying for residency uh, in, here in the United States. Following residency placement, you'll be sitting for the USMLE and then on to physician licensure. And as I stated earlier, AUC students or graduates are eligible to obtain physician licensure in all 50 states. Okay, now moving forward, what are we looking for when we're in, when you, when a student applies to AUC? And as an ADA, I've had an opportunity to do hundreds of interviews, and I work closely with the admissions committee, and so we know exactly what as an ADA or associate director of admissions. We know exactly the questions to ask to be able to receive the information that's important to our admissions committee as they're taking their holistic review, holistic review approach and, and reviewing your applications for admissions. We don't just look at a number or a GPA or an MCAT score or, or anything. We want to take a look at the entire picture. We want to know how did you get to that number? So the same requirements, all of these requirements are pretty much everything that's going to be required at most medical schools, personal statement. Uh, per, you'll also uh, be required to have your bachelor's degree completed. We do require the MCAT. However, the U.S. Department of Education has actually waived the MCAT for the January 2021 semester. So if you haven't taken the MCAT, you know, it's an, it's a, it will be a good idea for you to submit your application now for the January 2021 semester. It is not being waived for anything outside of January 2021. So if you're interested, I, I, I would definitely encourage you to get started with your um, application for AUC today. You'll also be required to submit your letters of recommendations, resume, kind of showing your background of, of your exposure or experience in, in medicine. Um, when you're getting ready to submit your application for admissions, okay? Moving forward just a little bit. This gives a little bit about the, the tuition on AUC, uh, for AUC. Now, for your first five semesters, again, we offer a 10-semester program. For your first five semesters, the total cost for tuition is going to be $23,240 for, the, uh, for, the, um, for your first five semesters. Once you transition into the clinical medical sciences, the total cost for tuition will be $26,000, a flat rate of $26,000 for your final five semesters, which are semester six through 10. Okay, now to assist students or help students with financing because outside of the, 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 the desire of wanting to, to go to medical school, finances play a big part. And so, AUC is an institution that is recognized, again, by the U.S. Department of Education, and our U.S. citizen or eligible non-citizen can apply for U.S. federal loans through the direct loan program. So has, anywhere, has anyone ever heard of the FAFSA?
So the same FAFSA that you've completed if you've attended school here in the United States, the same FAFSA that you completed at your undergrad institutions is the same FAFSA that will be that you'll be completing to attend school here at AUC and students that are eligible, you can apply for up to 100% cost of tuition, okay, for, for your um, for federal loans, okay? More, eligible, or more um, evidence, evidence of us investing in you, we offer several scholarships as well. We offer academic scholarships that are automatic academic scholarships that are based on your academic performance. So we want to recognize all of the hard work that you put in in undergrad, all the late night study and all the pre-med courses, all the organic chemistries, and you've aced those. And we want to make sure that we're recognizing those. So we actually have academic scholarships available. And I'll share my contact information towards the end of the um, presentation. And you can reach out to me and we can definitely discuss the, 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 um, the value of each scholarship and which one that you may qualify for. Other scholarships we want to recognize for first generation MD award. If you're the first person in your family to attend medical school, like many of our students are, we, all, we have a very diverse student population where students are coming from all different backgrounds. So we have many students that this attending AUC or getting on this journey for, for, for medical school, they're the first person in their family to even consider, you know, going on the medical journey. And so we want to recognize that students have, can apply for the uh, first generation MD award. Um, if you've ever worked with or shadowed or uh, uh, volunteered with um, any of our alumni, we do offer the alumni heritage scholarship. And then also I see many students in interviews that I meet that have extensive amount of community service or community outreach. And so we also want to recognize that because that shows your dedication to, to the community and knowing and, and getting out and seeing what's needed or what impacts can you have or that you will have when you actually become a physician. All right. Again, um, I know I'm, I'm passing through the, the presentation a little bit quickly, but I will share my contact information at the end of the presentation so that you guys can jump in and join me. I mean, uh, so that you guys can contact me for any questions that you may have about scholarships, okay? Now, your learning environment. So right now, when folks in Ohio or Michigan or anywhere in the Northeast, folks are freezing and everything, you're going to have an opportunity to be learning in a wonderful, outstanding environment. Students are going to complete their medical sciences on our campus, which is located in St. Martin. And right now, uh, one of the student orientation advisors that are actually in St. Martin that we're gonna be speaking to later on, just told me that the, 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 the current temperature right now is you know, over 80 degrees. So we're gonna be in a sun and a very sunny, comfortable, beautiful, welcoming, just a, a very outstanding island, diverse island that you're gonna find in St. Martin. So arriving in St. Martin for your for year one and two is a very is a lovely island. They actually kind of nicknamed St. Martin the friendly capital of the Caribbean because the AUC has been located in St. Martin since 1998. And so we've shared their island and, and they've been just uh, giving us a warm welcome overall as far as the locals of St. Martin. St. Martin uh, represents about 110 different nationalities. So you'll meet people from all around the world. Uh, the U.S. dollar is accepted everywhere. Um, English is widely spoken throughout the entire island. But again, uh, it's a very diverse island. So you'll hear different languages, but everywhere that you go, English is the common language. So making the transition from being home in the United States to transitioning to St. Martin is a very smooth and comfortable process. And our, and our um, uh, student orientation advisors on the line are going to be discussing that um, later on in the presentation. Okay, so it's a very warm, again, welcoming island. Restaurants, uh, you cut it on a television, you can watch U.S. stations, so the transition is not a, 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 a not challenging, it's very smooth, and everyone that I speak to after moving to St. Martin, they're like really excited to just be in such a beautiful place. All right, so once you're on St. Martin, life as an AUC student 
We're going to be discussing this as well. Again, academics is number one once you're in medical school, but it's also important to have a family support system when you're away from family. So we promote students join organizations to build that com or student organization to build that camaraderie amongst students. We have things from the family medicine interest group to pediatric uh, interest group. Um, so, you know, it's, it's important to, to get out and join those every semester. We do a community action day in which we're getting out and volunteering throughout the island of St. Martin. But we don't just wait for the end or one time per semester. It's ongoing, you know, throughout the student organization. They're highly involved with community outreach in St. Martin. So we, we promote you to join any of the student organizations. Wellness on campus is very important. Wellness, and then also just having things to do or extracurricular activities, you know, just hanging out with friends. So, you know, after class, it'd be good for, you know, a good workout or maybe a pickup a basketball game with some friends, you know, right on the campus, you know, or jogging on the beach or, you know, whatever the case may be, whatever, you know, anything to just kind of be that, 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 that stress relief, you know, helping you kind of press your reset button. Uh, while you're on campus. All right. Again, this talks about the community service that I was speaking about, community action day. These are things as an AUC student, you're going to have an opportunity to be involved in because in academics is going to show your 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 dedication to 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 academics, but also you also want to have an opportunity to show your 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 dedication to the community, to the institution, to your future patients, and and you know, and also becoming culturally aware, interacting with people from all different walks of life. And so that's going to be very important as, a, as you um, develop or, or evolve into a physician. Okay? How we support you from day one. Like I start talking about, from the time that you inquire about AUC, you're going to start receiving the experience that you're going to have from the time that you, from the time that you inquire up until graduation and and forever. It's, it doesn't, it doesn't end at, at graduation. So you'll be, you know, uh, you'll be in contact with student orientation advisors, which we do have some on the line today, um, faculty advisors, um, housing resident advisors, wellness counseling. And as we're aware and looking at throughout the world, mental health awareness has um, been, been, been focused, been, there been a lot of laser focus has been placed on mental health, mental health awareness throughout the entire world. And so the stress of a medical, and, and it, medical school is very stressful. It's very, you have to, it, it takes a lot of commitment. It takes a lot of dedication. And so it can be stressful. So we have wellness counseling in place to assist you and, and support you, you know, throughout this long and tedious journey of going into medicine. So we're gonna be supporting you at every point of your program even before you've actually submitted an application from the time that you reach out to me, to me as an associate director of admissions or any of the other associate directors of admissions that we have placed in different geographical locations throughout the US and, and some international areas as well. All right. A you focused faculty, again, this just kind of gives you an idea of the, the, of, of the credentials of our faculty members. And, and their focus on you as a student. Um, and I invite you to go to our website, aucmed.edu, to look at the bios of our individual uh, faculty members. And I'm definitely sure that you will be impressed with our faculty members. And again, they are committed to teaching and they really wanna help develop you. It's not just about being at AUC for a personal game, they wanna see the start. I mean, from start to finish, from the time that you start medical school and help shape you into an outstanding physician that is gonna have a huge impact throughout the world. All right, this again talks about our hands-on lab facility that I spoke about and being able to gain those real life medical scenarios, anatomy labs, we have uh, computer labs where you'll be taking computer-based testing to start getting your mind prepared for um, uh, uh, USMLEs or board exam. Uh, again, apply a research laboratory, virtual imaging, dry anatomy lab as well 
just to name a few of the facilities that 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 you're going to experience on the campus at AUC. All right, and then again, this talks about our ICM courses. During your medical sciences, you're going to take um, introduction to clinical med courses during your first five semesters. And again, this is one of the, the the areas I was speaking about of you receiving that those real life medical scenarios even before you're able to get into your clinical rotations. You know, simulation rooms. You're working on the mannequins, but also in ICM courses, you'll do patient interviewing skills, um, um, uh, working on the simulators, um, um, patient examinations. You know, with with some uh, folks that we uh, think they're titled professional students and pretty much actors or whatever the case to help you to kind of help you start practicing and training and getting feedback to help you evolve as a physician. So when you do step into the hospitals for year three and four, it's not just a brand new experience. All right. This talks about our residency placement for 2020. We were, we're excited. Again, I've been with AUC for 12 years now. And since the time I've been here, we've always made strides to making sure that we're continuing to strengthen our education, making sure that students have everything that they're gonna need to prepare them to be able to receive their residence or, or, or to be able to obtain licensure here throughout the United States, but not just about passing exams or, or teaching you how to pass exams. We really are dedicated to help developing you into an outstanding physician. So again, um, this is gonna wrap up uh, the, present, uh, the, the PowerPoint presentation. We're gonna invite the uh, panelists to join me again. Um, and as we discuss, you know, um, the, the student orientation advisors to join me once again. All righty. All right. So how's everybody doing today? Welcome. And I'm going to go through, we're going to um, allow each of the panelists to um, introduce themselves. And then we're going to open up for a Q&A. So please be sure to submit your questions to the chat room so that we can, so that make it, so that we can make sure that we're answering all questions today. All right. So just getting started, we have some folks here. These are our student orientation advisors. And I know that we may have some students that will be beginning school in either the January uh, or May or fall 2021 semester. So these are the folks that you, these are the bright and smiley faces that you're actually going to see. Um, as you know, as you're getting ready to start school. So I'm going to give them an opportunity to introduce themselves and then we'll go through some fun questions. So just getting started, I'm just going to go around the room uh, as far as how I have you guys on my screen. And Andrea, uh, she was one of my students when she actually applied to AUC. So it's a pleasure having her and seeing all the, the great strides that she's made while attending AUC. Let me know that I did something good when I picked Andrea. Andrea, can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you, your hometown, what undergrad institution that you actually attended? Yeah, um, so I went to University of Tampa and I'm from Tampa, Florida. Um, I'm a fourth semester now, so my time at AUC on St. Martin is almost at the end. Um, and yeah, like you said, you recruited me, so here I am. <laughs> Thank you so much and welcome. Thank you once again uh, for joining us today. Adana, how you doing? I'm doing good. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Adana. I am currently in my second semester at AUC. Um, I'm from California. I live up in Northern California, about an hour away from San Francisco, but I did do my undergrad in Southern California at Vanguard University. Um, and yeah, I'm loving my time at AUC, excited to um, get on the island because I haven't been there yet with everything going on. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, Selena Gomez, how you doing today? <laughs> I'm good. Um, so my name is Selena Gomez, like the actress. Um, <laughs> I am from Wisconsin, um, a little town called Kenosha. I mean, it's not that small, but kind of small when you're from Wisconsin. Um, I did my undergrad at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. Um, I'm currently on the island right now, so 
normally around this time it would be very gray outside and very cold right now it's very sunny and 85 degrees so um yeah and i've um i guess that's really it <laughs> wonderful thank you so much again for joining us kiana how you doing i'm thank good you for Hello, so I'm Kiana. I am from Missouri. I am a current third semester. Um, so I've been here since January and I'm currently still on island. I've never gone home. And then I did my undergrad at Truman State University. Wonderful. And we have one more. Luna, are you there? Can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. We can't see you, but we can hear you. <laughs> yeah, my camera is like giving problems. I'm still trying to. That's OK. That that's OK. The voice is just as good. Can you introduce yourself? OK, well, yeah, sure. Um, so my name is Luna Emoji. I was born and raised actually on St. Martin. I did my undergrad in Canada, Windsor, Ontario. And of course, I haven't left because I'm from here. <laughs> so I've been home this entire um. <laughs> since January as well, but yeah, I'm very happy to be here with you all. Wonderful, thank you so much. And again, to all of the attendees here, make sure that you're submitting those questions because again, we have students that are in St. Martin, students that have gone through the virtual learning, and then we actually have Luna there who's actually from St. Martin, so she can give us more information about the actual island and the wonderful thing that they offer um, more than anyone. So thank you so much. So we have a few questions coming in. Uh, from students and again students we're going to try to answer as many as possible if we miss some we'll be sure to get back to you um, after the after the presentation so one of the main things that I actually get from uh, or that I want to start on because we're talking about what it's like to be a student so I want to start from the beginning each of you I'm going to ask you this question what were you all looking for give me an example of what was important to you or what were you looking for or why did you choose AUC or, or what were you looking for in a medical school when you decided I'm going to start submitting applications? Andrea, we'll start with you again since you're first on my screen. Yeah, sure. Um, so um, I was looking for, uh, first, I knew I had to move out of this. Well, I was already um, aware I was going to have to do Caribbean, so um, which is not a bad option, but I wanted to make sure mm -hmm. the island that I chose was one that was kind of more on the modern side, had more tourism. Um, so St. Martin stood out. They're very, um, very modern. It Honestly, mm -hmm. you can find everything in St. Martin. And then my second one, importantly for school, I wanted smaller class sizes because um, right. I really wanted to make sure I didn't fall through the cracks. Mm -hmm. And if I Help, I could find professors or find a mentor or peer-to-peer -peer or tutoring or anything that I needed. So I felt that with a smaller class, I was able to be, mm -hmm. uh, accomplish that. Wonderful. And that's another thing that I spoke about at the beginning was we don't, we're, we're not just about filling seats or being a mega medical school. We want to be having that more of a boutique um, attention or that style, you know what I mean, uh, for, you know, with AUC. Adana, what were you looking for? What was important to you? Um, yeah, so I mean, I tried to go the US route. Um, mm -hmm. obviously, as everyone knows, it's very competitive, really hard okay. out there. Um, and just starting, I started off a little discouraged, not knowing what I wanted to do, and I didn't think I wanted to do Caribbean. Um, mm -hmm. but when I did find um when I was looking into schools. I really liked AUC just because, again, like the small class sizes um, mm -hmm. and just the way that I was just looking for a place that felt that I would feel comfortable going mm -hmm. to people um, and asking for help. So just like, I guess, a familiarity or uh, um, mm -hmm. camaraderie, I guess, would be mm -hmm. the word that I was looking for. Yeah. Gotcha. And, and also, I get that or because I get out to many campuses and uh, speaking to students and so forth. And that's always like, it's not so much of a fear or a concern. It's just like, what am I getting into? Or what is the Caribbean going to be like? Is, am I able going to be, am I going to be able to practice? So Adana, what semester are you in now? I'm currently in my second semester. Your sem second semester. Okay. So you've been there two semesters. So you decided to stay. So you had these fears yeah. in the beginning. And so just since you've been there to this time, 
what have you found to kind of help release those fears that you had before getting into the program? Um, so I was able to like the person, the admissions counselor that interviewed me made me feel mm. really comfortable. I did also interview with other Caribbean schools, but I felt mm. more comfortable telling my story to the admissions counselor from AUC mm. and telling my story to other people that I came across. Mm -hmm. um, Andrea was actually one of my orientation advisors and <laughs> I, know I felt I felt comfortable enough to bother her for help like all the time. So I was able to find people that I could go to and I mm -hmm. felt comfortable going to and asking questions and people were receptive of me going to ask mm -hmm. questions and things like that. Wonderful. And that's that's the environment that we want to keep. We want to have an open ear and just keep that family like environment. We want to be approachable. Just the overall program and having that support system. Selena, what exactly were you looking um, for? Um, kind of like Adana and Andrea said, um, the small classroom sizes really like caught my attention just because mm -hmm. I am like a very visual learner. I like going to class. So um being in like, you know, uh, I think Andrea said like making sure I wasn't falling through I wasn't gonna fall through the cracks because I mean medical school is hard and you know when you need help there's always someone there to help you whether that's professors or even like students in the same class as you or upper semesters there's always someone there to help so um I obviously didn't know that when I applied but mm -hmm. it's been a nice thing to have um as well as this island is beautiful I've you know lived here I mean, I lived here January to March and then I came back in September. So I've been here for a couple of months and it's just beautiful. And I, I just really am glad that I chose AUC. Gotcha. And so you've pretty much been there since the whole pandemic thing exploded throughout the world. You've mm -hmm. actually been in St. Martin. And so, okay. Mm -hmm. And, and how's that been for you? Just being in St. Martin or being away from the U S or being away from family, you know, during such a pandemic, How's that been for you as an, and I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll ask everyone, uh, but how's that been for you? Um, so I went home in March and so I was there for a couple of months. Um, but honestly, coming back here, I feel, I personally feel like St. Martin has everything like really like under wraps or not under wraps, but like they <laughs> have control of like the situation. <laughs> like mm -hmm. every time you go into a store, they make sure you're wearing a mask They make sure you're hand sanitizing, like, Mm -hmm. social distancing like it's very um I feel very safe here mm -hmm. compared to at home sometimes mm -hmm. you would go into a gas station no one would be wearing a mask mm -hmm. again it's like rural Wisconsin so there's not that many people <laughs> but still um so compared to you know both extremes I feel like mm -hmm. I'm very comfortable being here okay. um even on campus I've gone to campus and everyone stays you know are apart and mm -hmm. we all wear masks and maintain social distancing and everything so i feel i feel like it's something that a lot of people might be afraid of but mm -hmm. in my personal opinion i think that everything is going okay here and okay. all right and i know and, and that's a and that's a valid concern for any of the attendees that are listening i know we've been in virtual learning for you know, since the pandemic and everything, but we are we are going to be shifting back to St. Martin uh, for the January 2021 semester. So everyone will be back, and as as Selena stating, and we'll speak to some of the other ones that are in St. Martin. Um, we've been handling it well, you know, considering with everything going on, the best that we could do, you know, with everything going on. So I've heard that from many students, um, and I actually have some local folks that aren't attending AUC that I'm very uh, that I'm close friends with, that I've been in contact with. All right, Kiana, how you doing? What were you looking for in a medical school? You said that you're coming from California. What did you say, Kiana? Where are you from? Missouri. Missouri, Missouri. okay. So what were you looking for? You're leaving Missouri for a medical school. Um, so similar to everything else, the small class size, feeling mm -hmm. like sense of home, like also from a small town, don't even have stoplights. So, <laughs> uh, you know, kind of like that on the island. Haven't found one yet. Um, but another big thing for me was financial aid. Um, mm. Medical school's expensive, undergrad is expensive, and not trying to spend the rest of my life in debt. Um, the financial aid that the school provided was something that really drew my attention. 
Absolutely. And as I stated earlier, AUC is approved for students, uh, U.S. citizen and non-eligible, non-U.S. citizen, non-eligible U.S. citizens that are, um, they can also apply for U.S. federal loans. All right, Luna, how you doing? Hi, I'm so good. Did you, did you attend high school and everything? You only went to Canada for undergrad, right? So high school yeah. and everything is in St. Martin. Everything. So you're driving <laughs> by this place every day in high school. Like, what the heck is going on over there? Talk to me right, about yeah. why did you select AUC? Um, so I like I, like you mentioned, I did my undergrad in Canada. So one of the big things for me was that um, I don't come from a rich family. <laughs> like for sure, what <laughs> Tiana said like resonated really strongly with me because actually, so my thing was that okay, when I'm finished undergrad in Canada. And I wanted to go to medical school there. It's not something easy for international students. So I really like it was very difficult in the sense that I needed to become a permanent resident before I was even able to apply. And that would have taken me one to two years because <laughs> I had to work full year and everything. So I came mm -hmm. back to the island because they actually give us um, study finances for us to do undergrad abroad. So mm -hmm. um, I went to them and I was like saying, OK, how much would you guys be giving in order for me to do, you know, post grad um, education and stuff? And they said, have you thought about AUC? And I was like, AU what? <laughs> like, what do you mean by AUC? So <laughs> AUC was actually on my island and I had no clue about it. Like I know there was an American <laughs> school, but I thought it was for Americans, you know? So I was like, okay, um, that's not for me. But yeah, they were like, yeah, if you actually get to AUC, there's like special scholarships for students that actually are from the island. So I was like, whoa, okay. <laughs> so um, that was a big thing for me, like to be able to come to medical school, like basically my dream and not be able to stress my parents too much in terms of like getting the funds and everything. So that was mm -hmm. really, really big for me. But another thing, like looking into AUC, I just started to fall in love with it more and more. Like everyone has mentioned the small class sizes where you're able to be up close and upfront with your professors. Cause like you mentioned, many of them are MDs. So then you get to speak to them and build a relationship with them and basically network out to different um, MDs and different um, fields of medicine that these doctors are in. So that was very nice, like to be able to just see your professor like at the cafeteria and be like, hey, and then you start talking to them. So I really enjoyed that and how it's a close knit community and we're all here mm -hmm. to help each other and stuff. So that's one of the biggest things that really made me fall in love with AUC. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that. And as you guys can see for the attendees online or, or viewing this webinar, everybody has a unique thing about themselves that they were in search for and they had to find that connection because obviously when you're applying to medical schools, you're applying to several at one time. So obviously these individuals found a connection, you know, with the program. So now that you've applied, um, you got accepted to school and Going to touch in, going to kind of go in depth. I know we don't have a lot of time, but students are asking, okay, you come into school the first semester. Give me a hand raise if the first semester was challenging for you. Give me a hand raise. <laughs> so, everybody, so you got that, fir that first semester shock of being in medical school. What adjustments did each of you have to make personally or things to making sure that you're staying? Uh, uh, up or uh, uh, you stand on top of your academics and everything. As far as now that you're an actual student, what support and everything was there available for you on campus once you did get started with the program? Andrea, we'll start with you. I'm sorry. No, you're good. Um, <laughs> so I think the biggest thing is um, first and foremost learning how to study. Mm -hmm. um, that I did in undergrad did not work in medical school and that was kind of like the first week kind of shock situation um I think that would be the first one and then second of all I know some people are hesitant to reach out to their advisors but I reached out to my advisor um her name is Dr. Rushing and now I've already had a class with her she's a professor there and mm -hmm. it's funny to see the full circle how we all came about but I looked for support in her and what to do and kind of the resources to look for and then mm. just my schedule and really learning how to time manage and um, mm. study efficiently. So um, that's one big one, especially in undergrad. I feel like I could have been like studying seven hours a day, but they weren't really efficient seven hours a day. Mm. Oh. So that one was like the big shocker first semester mm. and learning what's efficient, what's not, and how to manage all my time and everything that I had to be at. 
Absolutely. And that's a common one that I actually get from many students or I have a best friend that that that, that um, he, he graduated from medical uh, from medical school. And actually, one of my fraternity brothers is actually a, a student here at AUC getting ready to graduate in this May. And that was his thing. He was telling me, say, Seiko, I came in, I had excellent grades in undergrad, straight A student, and I got to medical school and it like slapped me in the face like you're not as good as you thought you were. So the first time truly being challenged. Adana, what about you? Any adjustments you had to make? Uh, yeah, same thing. I mean, time management was like a big thing. I mean, also I did, I've done two semesters fully online. So my first semester oh. was completely virtual. Mm -hmm. um, so adjusting first to doing something like medical school online, it's not mm -hmm. exactly what any of us that started that way envisioned. Um, right. So adjusting to that, having, um, living at home, um, all my siblings, I have four younger siblings, all of them were doing online school. My mom mm -hmm. was working from home. So adjusting to having so many people in the house and um, finding my own space to like be able to like focus. Mm -hmm. um, time management was tough because like I'm at home and you know, like mm -hmm. everybody wants to hang out and I wish I could have been in a library, but that wasn't available. Um, mm -hmm. And then also just, um, knowing um, when to ask for help and like who'd mm -hmm. ask for help. I think mm -hmm. um, professors, faculty made themselves really available for us, um, especially with having to adjust to like the situation. Um, so that was always um, nice to have too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. And so Adana, just real quick, you've done both your semesters virtual. Yes. Yeah. Could you have imagined a year ago when you're thinking about applying to medical school that I'm going to be doing medical school online because you have even thought about no one could have predicted a um a pandemic would would happen could you have even imagined that no not at all yeah and let me ask you a question real quick why didn't you just give up and say I'm not going to medical school um I just was excited to even have had the opportunity to mm -hmm. be doing it at all and okay. online is it exactly what anybody would envision doing medical school. I mean, we mm -hmm. had anatomy lab virtually, mm -hmm. like how, imagine how that, you know, looks. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I knew it was gonna be tough and I just mm -hmm. thought, you know, this is what I wanna do and this is where I wanna be. Um, mm -hmm. So just having to push through and adjust to the situation, which Absolutely. I mean, even if it wasn't online, a medical school is different from everything you've ever mm -hmm. done. It's not grad or anything so you mm -hmm. have to adjust regardless absolutely and i know physicians you all know physicians no physician can predict the next challenge that they're going to be hit with and i can hear it now for you guys that are online or just all of you 10 years from now when you're at a medical conference giving a big seminar you're going to talk about your journey and the persevering spirit that you had that i went to medical school online first and imagine that before I able to, you know, do it live. So that's wonderful. Selena. Um, I think that um, the number one thing that I learned for myself was to ask for help. Mm -hmm. I think that sometimes when, well, a lot of us, we go into medical school thinking that we're going to do great. It's going to be great. We were so ready for this. And then, you know, some of us got hit with, midway through the semester being online, trying to transition between in-person to online. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes for me, it was hard. It, well, I just thought, you know, if I ask for help, like it's a bad thing, but it's actually yeah. a really good thing. Cause then you get mm -hmm. in touch with people. Um, like I got in touch with academic support and they set up a schedule for me and they really helped me, you know, time management is like the biggest thing, especially for mm -hmm. online. like. You, mm -hmm. you only have so much time in a day. And so they really helped me with that. Um, tutoring, I go to tutoring every week. Um, there's always someone there to help you. And then mm -hmm. also the professors are so willing to help with whatever mm -hmm. you need help with, any questions that you have. So um, whereas an undergrad, I probably wouldn't have <laughs> asked for help and I mm -hmm. don't think I did, but here, you know, everyone's very open and welcoming and they always tell you if you need help, just ask. And so mm -hmm. it's a really nice That's thing. And honestly, it's been so helpful. 
Absolutely. And I hear that from many students of just seeing the body language of individuals on campus, that they're approachable, they're welcoming. Because again, uh, many students, they come in, they, they've done undergrad, they were successful and they were able to do it all by themselves. I didn't need tutoring. I didn't need to ask anyone. But after that first week of medical school, you're like, I need help. You're on your knees begging someone, please help me. And so that, that's good that you're able to release that, release that pride because in the hospitals, it's a team environment. You have a leader, the MD is the leader, but without his team behind him, there's no way he'll, uh, he, he or she, let me say that, I'm sorry, without their team behind them, uh, they, are, they, they, they won't be able to be successful. Kiana. They have all pretty much hit on everything I would mm -hmm. say as well. Uh, I think my biggest takeaway, especially first semester, is it's okay not to be okay. Um, mm -hmm. I think undergrad, we kind of have that mentality, oh, we're pre-med or, oh, we're going down this route. We have to be at the top of our game all the time. Um, mm -hmm. Learned that that is not the case. Everyone is in the same boat. And like Selena said, you just have to ask for help and it's okay to do that, so. Absolutely. Uh, Luna? Yeah, like Kiana said, everyone basically mentioned <laughs> everything that we had to adjust. And like you mentioned as well, like, and also Andrea, like one of the big things for me is that in undergrad, I was able to do like all nighters and, you know, study from Friday until the Monday, let's say exams are Monday, and I'll be able to ace all my exams. So I was like, yeah, no problem. I'll go to work. I had like two jobs. I was like, yeah, this is nothing. And then I come to medical school and I'm like, whoa, okay, um, <laughs> this is not going to work. So Honestly, like the all-nighters will not help you here in medical school. Like you need to be on your game, like from day one and stuff, because if you miss a day, you're like two weeks behind. <laughs> yes. So it's like crazy and it's a lot. So I've had to adjust to that and not just like, um, you know, enjoying life. And then when it's time for exams, time to cram down because that's not going to help you. And it's also not going to help you be a good physician because you're just going to be memorizing the details to jot down on the exam and then you forget about it, you know? Mm. And that's not what Got we it. want. We want physicians that actually remember this stuff because they're going to be treating mm. patients. So Absolutely. that's that's one of the biggest things for me. Um, and also humbling myself. I was actually a person that um, I was able to, whenever I saw someone in the class in front of me or in class that was like the top or something, I would always go to that person. Like from undergrad, I'll be like, okay, you're top, time to go to you. You know, like to see what mm. is working for you and stuff. But what is right. a big thing for me in terms of medical school is that there are so many resources out there it can make you go crazy trying to figure out what you should do for every class. Like I feel mm. every single class is different. Every professor is different and every block is different depending on mm. who teaches it. So it's crazy. So to be able to go to the uppers and be like, okay, what worked for you this block? You know, what works for you for this professor? Because they're all different. And if you're just going to stay in your bubble and think, okay, you're smart, but are you actually preparing for the way the professor is going to test you, you know? So that was mm. very big for me. And I, really recommend like the minute you get in, just talk out people, even if it's your OAs or something, just be like, okay, you are the ones I'm gonna be messaging about because that we all help each other. And that's what I love about AUC. Like everyone is down to help. Like they literally be like, let me help you, you know, like <laughs> it's so cool and everything. So um, I think I think that's it. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that. And like, like I was uh, speaking about, we've been virtual, uh, We've been on the virtual learning platform since around March, but for January, we're gonna be heading back to uh, St. Martin for, for, for classes live. And the virtual learning, we want, we want to make sure that we've had the support system there for you, but now students, I know some students were concerned or asking about returning to St. Martin, but now is the opportunity for you to get that live instruction uh, in, in an environment that's making sure that students or the, the, the island and and uh, people are safe dealing with the pandemic and everything, but now it's gonna be that time for you to get back to the, to the original AUC of being able to get that one-on-one -on -one attention and walking you through the program. So I'm gonna move forward. We have a couple of more questions. We don't have a lot of time left, but a student, and now we're just talking about what it's like to be a student. I'm getting some questions, just like, what is it like to, what, what's the day in the life of an AUC student like? They're asking, I guess questions are, are you in class from 8 a.m. to 8 at night? Um, how do you, like, if you're, in, if you're studying all day, how do you get to these professors and talk, you know, or get tutoring and so forth? So anyone can jump in. I'll just leave it open, or open question. And anyone that has anything to, to add, we can just go ahead. But anyone, give me a description of 
what time, or, you know, what classes like are in the daytime? Do you pick your own classes? How is it set up for you as an AUC student or medical school student? So I'll go first. Um, you don't pick your classes per se. Um, they kind of give them to you. If you do want to, there's like a decelerated um, curriculum. You can mm -hmm. do that. That you can choose right when you start. Um, mm -hmm. Something that you can look into. But as for myself, I chose to not decelerate. So I have the mm -hmm. like the base plan of what the curriculum should be. Mm -hmm. um, and so my day to day, when I was on island, I would go to class 8 a.m. to 11:30. And mm -hmm. then I would have a lunch break and then right back into like doing my notes for the day, kind of reviewing and doing that. Um, now that we're in, online during the morning time, I go to the gym, mm -hmm. um, mental health, and then I review whatever was from the day before okay. and in the morning. And then our, because I'm on Eastern time, I don't start lectures until 11. We do mm -hmm. live professors. They're recorded. So you don't have to watch them right away. You can watch them later in the day however you want to set up your schedule, but I like live lectures. It makes me feel like I'm back in person kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I would do that. And then I um, usually finish lectures like 2.30. I would have late lunch, kind of take a break, kind of just relax a little bit, and then hop right back into notes and reviewing. Um, mm -hmm. as far as tutoring goes, um, every semester has different scheduled tutoring sessions, so there'll be okay. large tutorings. Okay. Um, I'm a fourth semester right now. Our tutorings are Mondays and Thursdays. Okay. Um, so tutoring is available. You can reach out and easily get a tutor, a peer tutor. So there's um general tutoring. So it's for everybody. Mm -hmm. It's set three three tutoring sessions a week for each class. Um mm -hmm. and then you can also reach out to get a personal tutor and have a okay. personal small group or a one-on-one, -on -one, which mm -hmm. um I peer tutored as well. So I got the experience and I had a peer tutor. So I've done both of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Was it hard to find a tutor when you first needed one? Or was it um, right in your face? Like? No, you just email um, academics and then they mm -hmm. usually assign you one. You can tell them if you want a group, like a small group, but usually it's like two to three people with you. Or mm -hmm. if you're not comfortable and you just want someone one on one, they'll find you someone that can gotcha. on your schedule. Gotcha. Um, how much time, like, okay, you do classes, five o'clock, I'm tired. Can I just go home and go to sleep for the rest of the day? Or is there extra stuff I need to do? What do you guys think? What should I be doing in the evenings? Um, I'm gonna let Kiana answer this one. <laughs> Kiana, uh, <laughs> they're taking on you. On I guess. Um, <laughs> so I'm kind of opposite. Um, so I'm on island. So classes here don't start till noon, and that's when I start my day. Uh, okay. That's like my 8 a.m. so to speak. Okay. Um, but. In the evenings, it's I do notes, um, so okay. I'm an outline learner, so I do okay. all of my notes and start doing, but I'm up till usually 2, 3 o'clock AST okay. time, <laughs> uh, so I'll do questions most nights. So. Okay, so it is important to get some study time in. What's like the average? I mean, I know everybody's different. Three, four hours each evening be good for studying? I know Kiana's doing more if she's up to 3 a.m. <laughs> Uh, so the what I tell everybody is it's quality over quantity. So somebody mm -hmm. can study three hours and get good. Somebody can study an hour and be fine. You just have to Absolutely. figure out what your quality is. Absolutely. And that's the reason why I, threw, I posed that question because, again, it's not a competition. Andrea's not competing against Kiana. Luna's not, Luna's not going against Selena. Adana's not going against everybody. It's all about finding what works for you. And even selecting a medical school that you're going to attend, you're going to have friends, you're going to have advertising, you're going to have commercials and everything, but you really have to investigate, or not investigate, but you really have to uh, do your research and see how is the institution uh, truly connecting with you and what you are looking for in a medical school. So that'll kind of give you a, a day in the life. We've got time for maybe one more question real quick. Um, outside of student, I guess as an OA and so forth, have you guys done any community involvement, um, any participating in any other student organizations outside of being an OA? Um, Selena, I'll jump on you and Luna this time. <laughs> um, yeah, I have um, done a beach cleanup. 
um, okay. the first semester that we are here for Community Action Day. Um, and I'm a part of three organizations, um, AMSA, American Medical Student Association, Latino Medical Student Association, which Andrea is co-president of, and um, the Pediatric Interest Group, so. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Luna, anything you're involved in? I'm involved this is your too island. much. <laughs> this is your island. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I've been quite a bit. So um, I've done tutoring and peer tutoring, small group tutoring. I also am part of Pediatric Interest Club, um, the Christian Medical Dental Association, um, OA, of course, oh. um, resident advisor, which is going to be next semester. Um, there's like so many things to do, like community action day. I try to be a part of it every single semester. So community mm -hmm. action, I think you talked about that, right? So where you right. basically go out and you try to help and basically help on islands, which I really love. Like, I'm like, oh, I'm giving back to the island that's helping me. So anything Absolutely. that has to do with helping St. Martin, I'm like jumping on it. Like, oh, you're okay, I'm jumping on. So it's like, <laughs> I really enjoy doing that. So I did, um, what is it, the beach cleanup, that's that. And there's also a community engagement certificate program actually that we started in January. And mm -hmm. it's a three semester course long um, program certificate program where you basically design programs to engage the community and design different things. So for example, my group, we are working with the Mental Health Foundation on the island. And we right. basically had sessions with them last, well, this semester and next semester, we're gonna be doing candle making. The semester in front of us, they're working with the, what do you call it? The um, Ministry of Education on the island, okay. and creating programs for students in order, because we have this thing like, at the first semester you spend actually learning about the island in terms of what is prevalent, right? So BCD is prevalent, diabetes, high blood pressure, those kinds of things. And then the second semester you work on developing a program to help the island. So there's so many things actually at AUC that you can get involved in and I really recommend it for everybody. Absolutely. And as I stated earlier, studying academics is number one, but again, you want to shape yourself into a well-rounded physician. And so, um, I know students, I know the attendees, you guys have many more questions out there. We're getting them flooding in um, and we won't be able to get to them all today, but I'll be sure that um, we'll pass out your questions or, or distribute those to individual ADAs in your areas and we'll be reaching out to you guys to assist you all with questions. I wanna take this opportunity to thank each and everyone, Andrea, Donna, Selena, Kiana, um, Luna. I wanna thank you guys for joining me today. And again, it just, shows that this was all volunteer. We didn't prep these folks. I just asked the question and they were just excited to be able to show their passion to you guys that are considering applying to AUC. And so as I stated earlier, hey, why wait? This is your time. Right now we are taking applications for January 21, uh, May 2021 and fall 2021. And so we wanna invite you to get the application started. Um, I'll be here to help you out with any, any questions or any of the ADAs will be assisting you through the application process. So please reach out to us all. And so I know we only have one more minute, so we won't be able to get to everyone. And since Andrea is the president, I'm just gonna lead, let her close us out real quick, just real. Celine, I mean, Andrea, just give us the, the attendees one tip for success as they're getting ready to begin medical school. What would you definitely tell the student to, to prepare for a tip for them as they're getting ready to apply or getting ready to go on the medical school journey? Um, I think believe in yourself. Um, if you really set your mind to something and if you really want something, um, it doesn't matter how you get there, what route you take, whether that's the Caribbean route, whatever it is, if that's your dream, believe in yourself and truly commit to that dream and however, whatever it takes to get there. And Andrea drops mic. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all once again for joining me today. Again, attendees, reach out, get those applications started. I'm going to be looking out for those. I can see the attendees' names. Looking forward to working with you all. OAs, I really appreciate you guys. Take care. Hopefully, I'll be seeing you all I'll, uh, maybe uh, on the island sometime in 2021, and I'll definitely reach out to you all for you know future events as well. So thank you again. You guys have a wonderful day. Now, go back and study and get back to all that hard work. And to the attendees, thank you guys for joining us uh, here for American University of the Caribbean School of Medicine. My name is Sekou Smith. Thank you guys. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.